Have you ever been inspired to make something with beautiful and intricate embellishment like smocking? Something like a new medieval smock apron or a fancy shirt perfect for transporting you back in time. You sit down and you get comfortable, you start stitching and you're waiting for that moment you get into the zone and you find yourself transported to a place of pure relaxation. But that state of bliss is obstructed because your thread gets all tangled up. It's okay, you fix it and you keep on going and you tell yourself it's just a momentary setback. But then you make another mistake and another until the frustration has boiled up inside and you're ready to explode and yeet the darn thing into a bog. Well, that happened to me recently while I was recording and I was so frustrated. I was just getting ready to bin it and start it again. And then I thought, well, maybe it would be good for me to show you so that you can learn from my mistakes. So come along with me and learn how you can avoid these frustration making mistakes and go from this to this. So this first mistake won't ruin your project altogether, but it really will add to your frustration, and that's leaving your seam allowances in your gathering threads. So if you do leave your seam allowances out of your gathering threads, that means you don't have to worry about looking which pleat you're working in next. It's just there and you start at the beginning. Whereas if you leave your seam allowances in, you are constantly having to double check which one is the correct pleat to start in. So in order to do this, if you are pleating by hand, it's really easy. You just start your pleating stitches on the inside of your seam allowance. Now, if you're gathering by a machine, pleat the whole thing up and then what you'll do is you'll just back the threads out of the seam allowance area and then tie up, which leads to the next frustration making mistake. And that is not properly tying off your threads. There's nothing worse than having a gathering thread come undone in the middle of working your embroidery. Now, it isn't the end of the world usually if you lose just one, but more than that can often spell disaster. So the best bet is when you are tying your threads together, just make sure to tie them together in pairs and give them a really nice tight double knot. And for good measure, I'll go in and tie an additional knot over the top of that knot. And leave a long enough tail so that it doesn't work itself out and yet not so long that it gets in the way. If one does come undone, if the thread is long enough, you can usually stick it through a needle and just work it back through the holes left behind. Now, if it's too short, that may not work. So just be careful as you're working your stitches, trying not to pull anything else out and just go through and double check that everything else is well secured because you don't want to lose more than one. So now that you've done that, the next step is to make sure that you have started your embroidery on the correct side. Now, this isn't the worst problem unless maybe you've already hemmed everything, then you're just gonna wanna make sure that you start again on the correct side. But if you're working from the wrong side and you're working on the side where your the threads from your gathering stitches are hanging out, you will catch them in your thread every time you stitch and it gets really frustrating. So just make sure that your fabric is turned the correct way and that you are working on the side opposite of your gathering threads. And if you've left your seam allowance out, you should have some nice little flap that protect those gathering threads even more from getting caught in your stitches. So now you're ready to begin stitching. And that brings us to our next mistake, which is not controlling your thread as you stitch. The way to get the best looking stitches is to make sure that you have control over where your thread is as you're stitching each stitch. Now, the rule of thumb is that if you are doing a stitch that is traveling down, the thread stays above the needle. And if you're traveling upward, of course, the thread will stay below the needle. So the most important thing is just review the stitch and make sure that you know when the thread needs to be above the needle and below the needle as you work it. Also, as you are working your stitch and you pull it through, make sure to follow through in the direction that the thread started to travel until it is taut before you adjust for the next stitch. And if you get something wrong, you can usually see it right away. So just make sure to check for accuracy as your stitch, and that way you can just back it out and fix it right away. There's nothing worse than getting to the end of the row and noticing that you made a mistake somewhere in the middle. The next frustrating mistake is not using the proper length of thread. Now, each time the thread goes through the fabric, it's being rubbed against by the fibers in the fabric and it is being weakened. If the thread is too long, it'll eventually start to fray from the pressure and this fraying will cause the thread to have a fuzzy appearance. 
and at worst, it could cause the thread to break. But what happens if you run out of thread before you reach the end of a row? Great question. And that is our bonus for today's video. It's actually really easy to end your thread and start a new one. In order to do that, just take your thread and pass it behind your stitch to the back of the work, and then you'll just secure it to the back of the pleat with a simple knot. Then secure a new one in the pleat next to it and bring the needle through to the front on the right side of the next pleat. Stitch through that first pleat just like if you were starting at the beginning of a row and then continue on from where you left off. Also, if you are using embroidery thread, make sure that you are applying it properly before you begin. And I will put a link in the description to a video that we have that talks about how to do that and Maybe I'll put a card up here if I can remember to. <laughs> now the next frustrating mistake is not avoiding your gathering threads as you work your embroidery stitches. Now I have to admit, I am very guilty of this one. And it is really frustrating when I go to take my gathering threads out at the end. This is a hard one, but do your best and just practice and just be diligent about it as best you can. And if you do happen to catch your gathering thread in your stitching, just be careful as you're removing them at the end. Don't try to yank them out because in doing so, you might either distort your stitching or weaken your thread. Instead, grab a small pair of snips and carefully clip away the gathering thread until you can easily remove it without damaging your embroidery. Which brings us to the next mistake, which is not planning ahead. Make sure that you have the correct amount of pleats you need if you're doing a specialty stitch. Take this one, for example. This one creates sets of peaks and each peak requires three pleats. So it requires that the row have enough pleats to be divisible by three. And if it isn't, you're going to end up with extra pleats at the end, which after you've completed an entire row can be quite disappointing. Now, if you're curious about how to do this particular stitch, then check out this video here. Happy smocking and I'll see you in the next one.